Howdy. Welcome to Texas Front Porch. I'm your host, Tex. Y'all saddle up with me and my co-host. We're about to sink a spur and go on a ride that takes us down some rocky and windy trails. We're going to do our level best to cipher out everything we can about all sorts of critters. Bigfoot, Dogman, pretty much anything that walks, creeps, crawls, or even takes to flight. Rabbit holes we're fixing to be poking our heads down is going to take a look-see into everything from abduction to xenophobe. We may not always agree, and that's all right. That, my friends, is how we learn. We will be conversating with a whole lot of interesting folks here on the old porch, and y'all are welcome to chime in. Just keep a civil tongue, and it will go as smooth as a fine whiskey. Y'all can find us over yonder on the Facebook, TikTok, Reddit, Rumble, or you can email us at paracryptidencounters at gmail.com. Or if you're feeling real neighborly, shoot us a text, 972-559-0988. Enjoy the show, folks. Good evening, everybody. How you doing? Hey, it is Monday, and it is a brand new year. I hope everybody made it back with all their fingers and toes and uh had a good happy safe new year and and uh we're gonna kick it off and and we're kicking this one off like gangbusters these these cats that we're having tonight we i gotta give i gotta give jason credit I, you know you know i don't like doing that but i gotta give jason credit because he he's the one who introduced me to these fellas and and uh dad gummy it was a good move okay i guess i'll give him that much but the, these cats, they uh, they made a brand new. Uh, well, it's been out for a while, but they they, I think it's the newest one that's came out so far. Bigfoot documentary and in search of the Oklahoma Sasquatch, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, Jason's in the documentary. I don't want to talk about that though. But uh, anyway, I hope y'all had a good New Year, good Christmas, and all that kind of good stuff. I I, th- I tried to deliver the presents on time. I think I got everybody, and uh, if I didn't, well, that's because you didn't deserve nothing but coal in your stocking anyway, or a bag of switches, is what my mama used to say. But uh, let's bring everybody up, and uh, well, let's get Jason up. Oh, good God, here we go. Let's get him up here. This is the second week in a row since I uh, sort of had to recuse myself from you know from usual and regular I told duties. you you wasn't gonna be able to stay away well I, I i said i wouldn't be a stranger just didn't think it would be this often but you know it is what it is no, you're, you're, you're a strange er but you know i love you too tex speaking of all <laughs> of keeping everyone's fingers and toes so i got a good old-fashioned christmas flu which is why i was off last week like I had no, in, like, Monday I was coughing. I had that scratchy. And then, boom, I was done for the week. Um, so I was in bed, like, 8 or 9 o'clock every every night that week. I really was. And on, on New Year's Eve, I'm like, yeah, I'm not staying up. But I couldn't sleep. Like, I f- was finally feeling better, and I just could not fall asleep. So I'm downstairs watching just something just to, you know, fill in some time. And the neighbors next next door were just lighting all kinds of stuff right like mortars and everything i I didn't care i went out just to make certain it was them and not like some random street kids you know (laughs) i want to make certain they were at least adults drunk or not um and then i'm sitting there and it's like two in the morning and i hear multiple go off and they were much much louder than all the others and i was like you know i assume if this had gone badly, I'd be hearing a lot more screaming than I am. But I might want to. But I, I think I probably have a duty of care here. Let me go double check. I just I poked my head. I was like, "Y'all all have your fingers and toes." They're like, "Yeah, we're good." I'm not kidding when I say this. There is a massive black burn scorch mark on our street. <laughs> like it is, it is solid black. Like so you had just like someone and they're like, "Yeah, we just kind of tied tied some things together and it just went off." And I'm like okay you know well, like i said not i i don't care like i really don't i do not care i was just like that's that was louder than the rest of them by a lot well, you know 
I, 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 I got to jump on a couple of things real quick. One, we got to welcome a new audience tonight. Oh, yes, we do. Yeah. We, folks, <laughs> we have totally jumped off the deep end and went completely off the rails here. We are live on TikTok as we speak. We made it to a thousand followers, over a thousand followers in less than three weeks. Yeah. And that's just I with him I doing videos. Shout out, I, Cause I, I'm, I'm They're him. Yeah, there we go. Cause now we can't stream directly to TikTok, So I've got my phone going over here. And so I'm, I'm on TikTok over here. I'm on the computer over here. So I, you know what? Damn, that means I'm computer savvy, don't it? But you know, these folks, we got we got a few folks. It's our first live, and they're, they're being so nice and everything. They're like, hey, you know, that's great. Welcome to TikTok and all this kind of stuff. We're getting comments and all this kind of stuff. I want to welcome y'all. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, if you want, you, you can come over to the YouTube channel. And trust me, the folks that are in our chat over there, we've got good grief. We got 60, we got 60 plus right now. So, if y'all want to come over and say hi, this is the most welcoming bunch of folks you'll ever see on YouTube. I guarantee you in our chat. Um, so another thing I want to go over, we're, we're missing somebody tonight. We're, uh, Brandy's not with us. Um, Brandy and, and uh, Krista right now are uh, in duck and cover mode because they got some weather moving in. Um, but, uh, you know, y'all stay safe out yonder. And I know we got some, We it's going to move through our area about eight, nine o'clock, I believe. So Jason's ignoring me. He's on his phone. But uh, I am harassing you right now. Are, are you? Well, yes. Because you got to remember, I can't read nothing on that phone over there. And I'm not going to pick it up just to, what, just to see what you're getting your jollies off on over here. Let's get these boys up here and I'm going to let you do the, I'm going to let you introduce them. All right. Okay. If you, if you pull your head out of your phone long enough to join us, <laughs> I just finished typing. Okay. <laughs> like you spend half the show looking at different things instead of actually paying attention. To, I'm just whatever. See, hey, this, this is what I have to put up with. For me though, I'm replying to stuff that's talking to me. You're not. Are you saying you're not talking to me right now? I have to. Um, well, but I have to pay attention to the other voices going on, too. That's fair. All right. Bring them up. This is hey, uh, hey. Thank, This is their not their first time. This is y'all are returning. Yep. This is what your yep. second or third time? I think. Uh, yeah, second, I think it's yeah. our second. Yeah. It's good to be back, though. Yeah. Back, back so, when we were first on, it was still called Trinity Para Crypto Research Group. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yeah, we hadn't done the name change yet, so it's been a, it's been a bit. Um, but yeah, y'all are the MHS Network. We've got the link in the doobly doo below. Very technical term. Um, but yeah, I mean it's a it's a it's a great channel. Lots of fun stuff, and of course you have your new documentary. It's only been out for like what three weeks. Uh, it's <clears throat> damn it, it Rob. Has, it it has been out uh, since Thanksgiving night. We dropped it online on the channel at six o'clock Central Standard Time, Thanksgiving night. And we had like seven people on the live stream. And, you know, it was fun interacting with them and mm -hmm. stuff while it was going. And then the live stream ended, you know, the, the live premiere. And we were like, okay, that was cool. You know, we, we thought the video would maybe get a few thousand um, views. Uh, we, we didn't expect mm -hmm. it to get. At this current moment, sixty-one thousand two hundred and forty-six views, and yeah. to be over eighteen thousand watch hours by itself. Um, we jumped up before the documentary went online. We had a little over three hundred subscribers. Now we have over eleven hundred. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, it's just we didn't expect that. We just went out there. We felt called to go and make this documentary. We just went out there, did it to the best of our ability. And, um, you know, God's just 
blessed it. So, yeah, no, it's a it's a great little documentary that y'all did, and I and it's about the search for the Oklahoma Sasquatch, right? I mean, I think this is that's one of the things I like about it is it's it's usually it's Bigfoot or whatever writ large, and but you're like no, just here. I we just want to talk about this yeah. little piece, the sliver of this Oklahoma. You know, it, it's very much about y'all. Mm you know, going out and doing things and, and just your exploration about it, which is what makes it a lot of fun. Thank you. So now we got some folks that are asking y'all are the, the MHS network. Yeah. Um, why don't you give us a little background on the MHS network, what it means and all that kind of stuff and go over exactly the how y'all came up with the expedition and loan name for all that kind of stuff and everything because there's a story to it there is and um we uh we, we kind of i think last time y'all were up here we we were talking about the whole alone thing and everything and i was kind of joshing with y'all about that but uh why don't y'all give us some background and tell us how all this came to be because there is a story and I love the story. I really yeah, do. It's a great story. And I love y'all guys because what y'all bring to the table is different than just about any Bigfoot documentary or anything about the subject um, that's out there to this level. There's a faith-based element to it. Yep. A very strong faith-based element to it. So, um, why don't y'all go into that a little bit? Yeah. And, and again, thank you. Um, so Coleman, uh, how we want to do this. I tell a little bit of it. You tell a little bit or. Yeah, that's fine. Go for it. I'll just pick up where you leave off. Okay. Um, so our, our kind of teaming up to do anything Bigfoot related started, um, you know, it was around the time we were all finishing high school and we were youth sponsors at our um, at the youth group that we all met at. And or at least I met Coleman in Montana, which he couldn't be on the show. Um, but sorry, my dogs. Go lay down. <laughs> hey, it wouldn't be a live show if we didn't have a varmint it interfering or. And when I say varmint, I'm including Bob Van Buren in that, too. <laughs> as you ahead. should. So anyway. <laughs> Um, so at least I, I'm, I met them in our youth group and, um, you know, we, we made a Bigfoot short film. It was our first short film we'd ever made. It was called never go alone. Uh, it stars Coleman Montana serves as the Bigfoot stand in the body double. And we just made that. And we asked our youth pastor, Hey, can we do like a, some sort of premiere at the youth group? And he made it a full on like red carpet premiere he had like a bigfoot photo booth set up and like that's what we did for the wednesday night and everybody loved it i mean it wasn't a perfect film by any means it was our first one but it uh they loved it and afterwards i mean we were already talking about you know like maybe doing a sequel something like that and then coleman i think was the one who had the idea of hey let's do a documentary at some point and of course you know, I was going off to college. He was going off to uh, the army. And so some time passed and I'm at college. I'm doing some graphic design and I designed the MHS network logo as a hypothetical mm -hmm. as a, if I were to design a, a logo for, you know, something mystery channel, history, science channel, what, what would I do and what would I call it? And so MHS stands for Mystery, History, and Science. And I'm I'm wrapping up college. Coleman's getting ready to come back from the Army. And we're all on a Zoom call. And I was just asking them. I was like, hey, you guys, like, my uncle Will, he's had a Bigfoot encounter. Why don't we, like, I mean, years ago, but it, it came back to me. And I was like, hey, Uncle Will, he had a Bigfoot encounter. Why don't we go ahead and like do that Bigfoot documentary we always talked about? And Coleman, I'll I'll let you pick up the story from here. Okay. Yeah. So you pretty much covered most of it, but yeah. So 
we uh, kind of just went our separate ways growing up and kind of stayed in contact a little bit. And then like Hayden was saying, we kind of reconnected and um, kind of revisited that idea that we had toyed with when we were younger about doing the Bigfoot documentary. And, um, and so that was pretty much it. And so we were, uh, when it comes to the title, um, you know, you we came up of, with the title. Yeah. I came with the title. I remember you were saying that you wanted to have it be connected to never go alone. Kind of. Yeah. And we we're trying to figure out like, okay, how to word that. And so I just said, what about expedition alone, a quest for the Oklahoma Sasquatch and it kind of stuck and, uh, that's pretty much it. And then we, um, kind of, when I was able to go back to Oklahoma, which is where I'm, uh, I'm born and, and, uh, grew up in, um, my whole life. And so when I was able to head back to Oklahoma and, and, uh, get back with Hayden to Montana, we immediately started filming and, uh, interviewed his uncle who had his encounter and just went from there. Yeah. And then, then we like, we're halfway through production on the documentary and we go ahead and release kind of a teaser trailer for it. And I shared it on like a Christian filmmaker, Facebook group or something. And someone tagged Jason in it and said, Jason, I think you'd be interested in this. I remember yeah. seeing that. Yeah. And then you reached out to us and that's how we got connected. And you guys told us about your area that we do, that we go look at in the third hat, you know, the third section of the documentary. And I mean, it just, it really became an adventure at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. I, I wish I had, I wish I could have made it up there with y'all and, but um, it is not over. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so what, what got y'all into these critters in the first place? I mean, because uh, I mean, honestly, you know, um, a lot of, uh, it, it's hard to bring that subject up or this subject up in like, church and groups and stuff like that because mm -hmm. like everywhere else it's it's kind of a are you crazy type thing <laughs> you know <laughs> oh yeah i i remember there'd be there'd be times where i would tell my pastor because i'm a youth pastor at, at our church and i would tell my youth pastor by the way shout out to any of the youth group kids who end up seeing this um but i was telling my pastor i was like hey by the way in a couple of weeks, I won't be here on Sunday. I'm going to be off looking for Bigfoot filming my documentary. And he, he just smiles at me and he's like, okay, I mean, but you can tell he, he's <laughs> apprehensive about it. And, um, and I told, I, cause I told him one day, I said, I don't, I have no idea why Bigfoot not, might not even be real. Who knows? I think he is, but we don't know, but we just feel like it's something God's called us to do. And, um, but to, to your question about how we we got into it, or at least I got into it, um, I I think the first time I had heard about Bigfoot was shortly before the Monster Quest TV show came out. Mm -hmm. And that came out, and that, and I read a, a novel called Cryptid Hunters. It was like a... Oh, yeah. And and that book, I, ended up, I now have all four books, and they're aimed for a little younger audience, but they're great books um so that's how i got just into cryptozoology like i like i always liked bigfoot but it wasn't always my favorite sat you know cryptid i mean right. i'm more nessie the live pterosaurs the you know anything which you have a story about I, I have a story about i can share at some point but yep um so i mean that's how i got into bigfoot and then the idea of of making a Bigfoot short film came from, I just noticed that I had a lot of Bigfoot stuff around the house. Like I had a Bigfoot keychain, a Bigfoot Christmas sweater. Uh, you know, I had several um, cryptozoology books at this point. I had a bunch of like, the, you know, like you can go and get like the little tube animals from like Safari oh, yeah. LTD. And I had a whole set of those where it's like a Bigfoot, a Yeti, the Loch Ness Monster, a Kraken, the fur the furry trout i mean <laughs> Jack <laughs> yeah and and mm -hmm. i just realized i had all these things and i was like well hey these would make for great props and so i started writing a screenplay and i never really written a screenplay that i'd ever filmed and i 
finished it and I pitched it to the guys. But anyways, that's kind of my rabbit trail. Coleman, how, how'd you get into it? Uh, well, for me, I, I guess my first exposure was probably the Finding Bigfoot TV show. I watched that a lot as a kid and I loved anything related to like Bigfoot or cryptids. I thought that was just a really interesting subject when I was little. And so any TV show or documentary I could watch, I watched it. And so when um, Hayden developed MHS Network and kind of said, hey, here's the channel, here's the premise, I kind of saw it as an opportunity to focus on that a little bit. And so that's when I really dived into the subject a lot more. I read um, Sasquatch Legend Meets Science by Dr. Jeff Meldrum. Um, Mm -hmm. I read a few other stuff. Um, And then obviously doing research for the documentary, you know, dove even deeper for that. And so I just got really into it. And it's uh, become a really interesting subject that, you know, it's the primary thing we talk about on the channel now. And and obviously that, you know, our content revolves around. So that's kind of how I got into it. Yeah. And we actually started working on the documentary before we we posted any videos on the channel. Like it was part of just the why we made the channel. And then we decided, well, if we want anyone to see it, we need to be putting up videos to start building an audience. But I mean, you can go all the way back to the earliest videos. I mean, we bring it up here and there. Yeah. So now that you've uh, what well, actually what was your biggest takeaway? from doing this this particular documentary yeah coleman you want to go um biggest takeaway um we i mean it was a huge the whole documentary was a really big learning experience and i think that's kind of if there's a theme it's kind of that's kind of it is just total newbies total you know three guys who have no idea what they're doing uh going in the woods and trying to figure out this whole bigfoot thing and research or whatever and um, as total, like I said, people who are just absolutely new to the subject and just have a very you know baseline knowledge from, like I said, like Bigfoot TV shows and all that. And so uh, definitely part of the learning experience there was, you know, learning more about Sasquatch research, learning more about what works and what doesn't work and what's kind of the stuff you see on TV versus, um, you know, how you actually research these creatures in, in this whole field, I guess. And learning more about that, uh, learning about other, you know, researchers like you guys, you know, text Jason, um, you know, connecting with other people and just learning and just, that's really the big thing is just learning. The whole thing was just a big learning experience, learning, not just about that, but learning about, you know, filming a documentary, you know, me and Hayden have always been passionate about filmmaking and wanting to make that, you know, our first ever, you know, feature length documentary. And I'm really proud that we were able to do it. And that was a huge learning experience about, you know, equipment and gathering evidence and editing and everything. So it's just the whole thing was a huge learning experience. So power of friendship. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, definitely. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I mean, you see that in the documentary. I mean, because one, one of the biggest takeaways that I hope audiences have from the documentary is that it's very important to get out in nature with people you love and just experience mm-hmm. God's creation. You want an excuse to, because a lot of people think, well, I don't have an excuse to go camping. Yeah, you do. Say you're going to look for Bigfoot. Say you're going stargazing. Like, you come up with excuses. I mean, I I know I mentioned in the documentary about kind of hoping that there's always some undiscovered thing out there to give people an excuse to just go and spend time in God's creation. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and that was honestly one of the biggest takeaways for me and just making it is because I mean, I had so much fun doing it and half the fun's not even in the documentary. Yeah. You know, I mean, just the, the traveling aspect and just, you know, all the jokes that go unrecorded, like all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, I'm looking forward to, to making the next documentary. Yeah. Well, that brings up a good question. Um, what are y'all going to make the next one on? You going to jump cryptids or are you going to stay on Bigfoot? Or do you um, Col- Coleman, do you want to, or you want me to? Oh, sure. So, um, I think what we're going to make the, the next documentary on, I think we're going to focus on the UFO phenomena and abduction, alien abduction phenomena. And, um, 
we talked about it. We're definitely going to continue the whole Sasquatch cryptic research um, when it comes to like uploads for the channel, um, continuing to research that subject and make videos on it. And, um, you know, I'm still going out there and researching myself. And so that's not going anywhere. And we, I mean, we will definitely 100%. There's no doubt about it. Um, we will make another Bigfoot documentary again in the near future, 100, you know, thousand percent. It's going to happen, but we kind of want to take the, the next one and use that as an opportunity to look at something else. And so the UFO stuff, and like I said, the abduction stuff, I think is really interesting. And I think there's a whole lot of important messages to get across when it comes to that. Um, and it's very relevant, obviously, too. So I just, I think for the next one, that's what we're going to focus on. We're in the early stages of getting that together and working on that. And then I think when that's done, we will, you know, Sasquatch part two, whatever we will, you know, make a, another document yeah. fixing on, on Bigfoot. We're, we're, we learned a lot from the technical standpoint of right. making a documentary. And then a lot, you know, in, in post-production, we learned a lot. And that's one of the reasons we want to kind of take, as far as feature length documentaries go, we kind of want to take a break from Bigfoot to do a totally separate or you assume totally separate subject, um, you know, so that we can kind of continue to refine those skills and those things that we've learned, you know, give us an opportunity to, you know, test what we've learned on, on that front. And then if that goes over well, we see that what we've learned has been true and has been useful and helpful and really improves Expedition Alone 2, where we're currently calling it, uh, subtitled The Great Deception. Um, that goes over well. We'll look at doing the next Bigfoot documentary. and Because we, we would love to get it to be as good a quality as anything you find on Netflix or Discovery mm -hmm. Plus or anything like that. We're right now in the process of raising up money to improve our equipment, um, all of that stuff. But yeah, aliens, UFOs, and the demonic. That's what the, the next one is. So, um, y'all, while making this documentary, you actually had some experiences. Yeah. You know, yeah, and I like, I like the fact that um, y'all aren't jumping at every little sound and calling it Bigfoot. You know, you're going, oh, you, don't get me wrong, you get excited when you hear it. But uh, hey, and I'm I'm as guilty as anybody. Um, when you, when you hear something that you never heard before, and then you have to go back and you have to, you know, debunk it if you can, and everything. And that's what happened with my owl video. But um, you you use that as a as a learning tool, you know, and. That's what I really, I think that's, that's probably the, the biggest single thing that I really appreciate about the whole, the, the way y'all approached it, because you were, you were skeptical, but you weren't closed minded, you know, and I think the, the, uh, when, when y'all are getting these interactions and stuff, you're like, Okay, well, was that an owl? Was what was, was it? Was what you know? What do we do? What you know? How's this and everything? And it, it's, I thought it was pretty pretty exciting. I know. Um, why, why don't y'all tell us a little bit about the howl, Coleman? Do you want to uh... about the owl you said, Tex? I'm sorry. The howl. The howl. Um, okay. Well, they were sitting oh. in that car. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so the first part of our doc, you know, we were, uh, like I said earlier, kind of taking that approach of um, making a lot of noise and kind of just mimicking what we had seen on like TV and stuff. So we did sound blasting of the Sierra sounds. Um, which which we don't feature the actual audio of in the doc because it's copyright. Yeah, we, yeah it's copyright. Right. We can't, but it, that's what we did. We sound blasted sounds and things like that. And we made a bunch of noise and um nothing really happened uh we did hear one really weird 
sound me and Montana did. And it happened when we were trying to get our um, cameras and audio kind of reconfigured. And so, of course, conveniently, it happened and it was a really weird sound. And it, I've always described it as kind of like a woman singing, like a, I don't know if I want to mimic it because it'll probably sound stupid, but it was, that's what it sounded like. It's kind of sound like. No, a, no. Oh, yeah. you, you, have you got to you got it. at least try. Yeah. All right. It's kind of underwhelming, but it was just like a woo. It just sounded like that kind of tone to it. And that uh, kind how of. Did, how did it go again? You want me to do it again? Yeah. Woo. I'm just kidding. Not that but, but, like that. want you to do is just sit there the rest of the night and go. Ooh. Yeah, but it was a creepy. It was a creepy like. Ooh. I mean, it's just and it just and sounded about, like. It sounded about like the a, same time they heard that, I because I was. I mean, I was right there around them, but about the same time they heard that, I heard what sounded like a woman screaming, which I'm not going to mimic because. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because it sounds too much like you normally screaming. <laughs> Probably, yeah. But um, so we experienced that and me and Montana heard it. It was really weird. And uh, so we kind of got in our car and we were just talking and we had the audio recorder running and we just, you know, just decided, OK, we're just going to talk. And, and we we're yeah. just sitting there chit chatting, you know, I mean. Yeah. And then we heard it and it was super loud and the recorder doesn't do it justice, <laughs> you know, because when you hear it, it's like, why are they freaking out? But man, when we heard it, it was so loud. And I mean, it, and we just looked at each other and I was just like, dude, get out of here now, like get out of the car or I can't remember exactly what I said, but we were, yeah. Oh, I remember exactly what you said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know exactly what I said. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Another time. Anyway. Uh-huh. Yeah. I had to edit it and I heard it, it a jillion times. Yeah. Well, just, yeah. Summary. It scared the crap out of us. And, um, but then we, we showed it to some people and we listened to it. And at the very end, you can hear, you know, with the barred owl, you know, that type of thing at the very end when but we talked over it so you can hear, and I didn't know barred owls could be that loud. I've heard barred owls before and, but yeah, it was, but yeah. So it freaked us out. Yeah. And that's just, again, that goes back to the learning thing. It's just, you know, we learned that that's what they do and learning more. And that's part of research. I think that's, it's part of understanding that, you know, there's other things out there that make noises and sometimes it gets misidentified or, you know, unidentified, you know, whatever. So it's just part of that learning experience. But yeah, it, it was scary. So, 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 so let me tell my side of the, my, my version of the story. Okay. <laughs> so we're, we're sitting there talking and we're, we're just talking about whatever, you know, and, and, and we hear it and Montana and Coleman flip and they're like, we gotta get out of here. I'm like, because we set up cameras out or not cameras lights up outside the car next to you know the yeti cooler and stuff behind the car and i was like well no we if if we leave we gotta go get that stuff and they're they're just saying because like this is my dad's yeti cooler these are the only lights i have that i can take into a field that i don't have like to plug into a generator or something and these guys are like no 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 like we will buy you more if they're gone when we get back, we don't want to be four one one cases. <laughs> so, so we go, we we drive yep. out uh, maybe 15, 30 minutes to my parents' place because it's it's the closest thing there. And we wake up my poor father at like 1 a.m. and we're like, you gotta come back with us with the truck and get the stuff, and and there's Bigfoot out there. And we're like all excited. And we like film something, you know, mm -hmm. you know, like at the truck. And we're like, man, we never thought this would happen. Blah blah blah. That footage, I have no clue what happened to, but I'm glad it's gone because it was really cringeworthy when you find out we had that whole reaction because of an owl. And so, and <laughs> you you'll, you'll notice, in the, yeah, and you'll notice in the documentary we actually play that sound bit again later real dramatically because we did an interview with dw that was actually the first thing we shot for the the documentary and that was the the first footage and i had completely forgotten that he had said sometimes you know the sasquatch will mimic large owls you know i completely yeah. forgot about that part and when i was editing it and i saw that part i was like okay i have to insert this clip again and so I insert the clip again with a little question mark of not an owl question mark. And it was it was probably an owl. 
but I figured I'd have a little bit of dramatic humor. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, yeah, that's, and then, I mean, we haven't even, Coleman, we haven't even discussed the uh, structure we found, which. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, I'm, yeah. I don't, and everybody knows that I'm not real big on structures. They have to be very, very intricate or, you know, just unexplainable for me to go, oh, okay. Um, but what y'all found was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, we, and we have, we have tried to debunk it. Yeah. Like we have tried and tried and tried. And we even went back before the documentary uploaded. We went back to Cherokee Central that same day. To, to go check up on it. It had been oh, about a year or so. And it was gone. Oh, Wildlife wow. management came into the area. They hadn't came in there. You could tell for years. It was overgrown. Yeah. It was swamp. Hardly trafficked. They came in completely. Like you can't even tell where it was. Hmm. And they put up signs at certain areas saying, you know, no trucks past this point or and just like demolish it. Like it was sad, like seeing so many trees cut down. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's really sad because we were really hoping to keep tabs on this particular structure, see how it changes over time. And now it's just gone. And so the you only know, thing we have to study is the footage and pictures we took. Right. I, <sighs> And I think, now this is just my, my personal belief. I think that they don't use them for long. Um, they may come back around because I think they travel in a territory. And um, I think they if, if there's one still there and if it's usable or whatever, if they, you know, having a lazy day and let's just clean up the house a little bit, they may reuse it. But, um, <laughs> what y'all found in the structure yeah was uh yeah yeah uh coleman do you want to discuss what all we found in the structure yeah uh we found a dead raccoon and uh it's uh you probably remember more details than i do hayden but it was weird because the the way i remember it um the fur everything was gone i mean the the fur on the head the head was still intact and I think on the, the feet was still intact, but everything else was just, I mean, it was just eaten clean. And, uh, and you probably have to help me out here. Cause I think, wasn't there broken bones or something too, that we noticed? So the only thing that was broken, it looked like the snake, the, the neck had been snapped, but it didn't look like the vertebra had been broken. It's almost like it, it pulled the neck mm. apart from the body and those joints just popped. Yeah. Off. That'll, that'll do it. And the only damage to any bones was the very ends of all the ribs. They were frayed, like they'd been chewed on. No. It's like, like something was picking its teeth with them. But with the whole body there, just... But yeah, I mean, the only fur left on it, the only skin left was the head, the paws, and the tail. But it still had all the fur and skin attached. It was just peeled back. And it was... It was weird. I I've never seen anything like that in the wild. It's not a highly populated area, people wise. It it wasn't a homeless dude. Yeah. Um. It. We 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 can't explain it. It, it wasn't a coyote. Coyotes eat everything. Um. Well, and, it would have been scattered. I mean. Yeah, it would have been scattered. And on top of that, like you could tell, it had been there for. Not too long, but for a little bit. Right. But it hadn't just crawled in there and died. And normally when a carcass is out there in the wild, it's gone in a week or less. Yeah. Right. Why on earth was it still in the structure? Nothing had touched it. And then it was it was in the bottom section of the structure. There was actually a built-in division in the middle of the structure that separated essentially the top floor from the bottom floor. And there was no, that we could see no access between the two floors, but it was, it looked very purposeful, like woven together type 
Yeah, it did. I I have some I I need to review it, but I actually we took a 360 camera and stuck in the top section. And I I should maybe I'll throw the the photo up on our Patreon page or something. But I mean, you can't tell too much from the photo just because it just all the sticks are so twined together that like you have no sense of depth Mm -hmm. between any of it. But it was it was crazy. I'm just the thing that's weird about it. It is weird. And y'all even talk about it. Is it possible that it's a a beaver den of some kind, but it's not near water. It's in the middle of a I mean, not a field per se, but it's it's not near water at all. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a creek, there, there's a creek that runs, um, there's, there's a small one that kind of runs on one side of it way down the road, and mm-hmm. then a river that I think feeds into Ulaga Lake um, that is way down the road still, and, uh, but I mean, that whole area, I mean, that, we, we found that at Cherokee Central, but that's really close to to Ulaga Lake, which from our research has had a lot of Bigfoot activity. Coleman, you know a little more about that than I do. Yeah. Um, so there's a famous encounter that took place in between the Vertigus River and um, uh, and Ulaga Lake. Sorry. It's in the northern part of would either be like the Ulaga WMA or the Nowata WMA. I think it would technically be the Nowata WMA, but uh, if anyone's familiar with the, I'm sure everyone here is familiar with the podcast Sasquatch Chronicles. There's a really famous mm-hmm. encounter that took place every, with two hunters that um, encountered a group of them and was mimicking them and speaking and all that. Really creepy episode. I can't. I think it's episode seven two nine off the top of my head. It's called Leave or I Will Kill You. Um, so you can check that out. But we learned without getting too much detail. But we learned when. Starting when we starting off with uh, Hayden's uncle, his encounter, we learned that that whole area for decades, for years, has had a history of encounters on the east part of that lake, on the yeah. northern part of the lake, all around the lake. There's been tons and tons of encounters, so it's really interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't know. If, and so talking about like encounters, I don't know if you want me to talk about the dream I had about Brown Springs. I, you know, I've never publicly, but if you want me to talk about that, I will. Cause that was kind of a weird thing that wasn't in the doc, obviously, but um, it, think- it, we're, we're planning on trying to find a way to feature it in the next doc though. Yeah. Well, it's up to y'all. If y'all want to give it away by all means, do it here. Sure. <laughs> so, I'm bringing this up because I remember I went back and watched our last interview we did for your guys' channel, like when Hayden was talking about when you guys were still uh, Trinity Paracryptid Research. Uh, I remember Tech saying, you said something, I'm paraphrasing, but I think you said something's going to happen. I can't tell you what's going to happen, but something will happen. And um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so I remember, yeah, so I um, we went there and, um, you know, met Jason and everything and, uh Nothing like when we were there crazy happened at all. Um, we had an issue with batteries draining. I remember when Jason yeah, showed us the spot there with um, with the springs and kind of at the entrance of that cemetery. I remember I got out. My camera was prior to getting there was like three quarters and then just dropped to mm-hmm. um, like it was about to die. And I made sure I showed Jason that because I remember you guys were talking about that, having issues with batteries draining. Yeah. And Jason, I know you're familiar with this because I, you know, I told you about it. Um, but after I left Brown Springs, um, and I've never talked about this before, but I've kind of been saving it for this because I want to, you know, share it with you guys and, and your audience and everything. Because I thought you guys would think it's cool. But um, had a weird dream. Probably I don't. I can't say for sure. Maybe a week after I'd gotten back home from Brown Springs, and uh, in this dream, I there was this woman with dark hair. Um, a white dress. Uh, her hair looked wet or greasy. I couldn't really tell. Just kind of had that clumpy look to it. And she had a uh, a white line like paint going from her forehead down to her nose, past her lips, to her chin. And she was bent over the bed talking to me. And I couldn't hear anything, but I just saw it almost from like a third person perspective. I could tell it was me and she was bent over speaking to me. And I woke up from it and I've had nightmares. I'm not, you know, 
I wasn't going to really make anything mm -hmm. of it. And, but I heard my wife praying in her sleep and I thought that's really weird. And um, she was saying the Lord's prayer. And so I made sure to ask her the next day about, you know, what was going on? Did you have a dream? And so I asked her and she said, yeah, I had a dream that there was a woman in white with dark hair bent over talking to you in your sleep. And uh, that freaked me out, man. That <laughs> freaked me mm -hmm. out. I told Jason about it. And yep. uh, I, I really do attribute that to Brown Springs. I've never had anything like that happen. And I just, you know, again, I just wanted to share that with you guys. It was a, a weird thing that happened. But yeah, I do think something tried to follow me home from Brown Springs. Brown Springs is a weird area, man. It, you guys weren't lying. It's, it's got a weird feel to it. And it's, it's weird for sure. That That's where we plan to start our next expedition in our, in our next documentary, because even though our next documentary is going to largely entail, you know, aliens and UFO, it's very much a paranormal spiritual documentary because oh, we're coming. Do we have a story for you? Be, because <laughs> we're, we're coming from the perspective uh, that, not really the perspective, I guess, but the question of what if aliens and UFOs are demonic in origin? And so one of the places that we're going to start our search is a place that definitely has demonic spiritual activity. Um, so, yeah, that's that's one of the places we're going to start if you all want to come hang out with us. Oh, you, you know, we'll be there if uh, we can make it. Um, and we will, I'm, I want to put a pin in that particular story for the second hour because there's something y'all aren't aware of. Yep. And uh, okay. we'll, 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 we'll talk about that on the uh, other side of, of the break. But yeah. before we, we get into been. that, yeah, we're going to have to get into it. Um, this is when I have a few more minutes before we have to, uh, to take the break. Um, where can for anyone who who may be listening on Odyssey and maybe can't join the second hour, uh, where can everyone find y'all? Uh, they can find us at the MHS Network. Uh, that's our YouTube channel. Um, I have it at the at least. I don't know if they can see our names, but I've got it on my little name thing. Uh, just type it in like that. Our logo is blue, white, and black, um, and it's got. If you look at the subscribers, it's got a little over a thousand. Uh, that's us. You can find the documentary there. Uh, Coleman did a interview with Cliff Barrickman recently. That's on there. Um, so that's our main area. And you can comment on there. We've got community posts. Uh, we've got our email listed. Um, so if if you have, you know, eyewitness encounters you want to share with us, if you want to keep things anonymous and you just want to share it, or you would love to share your story send it our way we we want to hear it y'all uh it, it you can also just type in mhs network and it pops up too guys it's like yeah. the second second or third thing down it, it, y'all's logo pops up there so that that's always a good thing if it pops up that soon so yeah we're doing very very well nope absolutely uh real quick penny uh yeah they're in oklahoma the entire the entire uh video is about the search for the Oklahoma Sasquatch. So it's a, uh, they're, they're them's local boys. <laughs> yes. Yes. We live here in Oklahoma, United States. I saw the little question pop up here. That's cool. So, um, <clears throat> Oh, wild gaming with, uh, with Jimbo has just subbed. Huh. Thanks. Wild gaming with Jimbo. There you yeah, go. Y'all please go over there and show them some, show these guys some love because and tell them text and, <clears throat> Jason sent you and uh, because I I see great things from these guys um, you know Jason didn't see the potential it was <laughs> you know we'll, we'll have to tell the story of how we met again at some yes. point <laughs> yes yeah. Oh, we're, we're going to get, yeah, once we get on the other side of the break, there's, there's plenty of stories to tell. Oh yeah. Things that did not make it into the, into the documentary. Oh yes. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it, it's actually, a, it's a funny story and there's a lot of, there's a lot of fun stuff. Plus again, we have to talk about your pterosaur encounter. I honestly, uh, there's, there's a lot 
there's a lot here. And again, to what he said, you know, I think there's going to be some great things coming out. I'm looking forward to y'all's uh, future works. Uh, but we're going to take a quick five minute break uh, to reset everything. And then we're going to come back. We've got a whole other hour with these lovely gentlemen. Um, and we will, you know, explore the, the story that many of our longtime fans have probably heard on several occasions and know what we're alluding to. But uh, these these boys have it. It may change. It, it may. Uh, it, it, it's serendipitous, to say the least. Yes, it is. Awesome. Yes, it is. So we're going to be back in five minutes. Don't run off. We'll see you all in a little bit. Four minutes to go, folks. Four minutes. Three minutes, we're almost there. Two minute warning guys, two minute warning. One minute, one minute.
And we're back. Hey, I got a little surprise for Cole. Hey, Cole, why don't you take a look at something? I want everybody else to take a look at this, too. Yeah, that's how it was. Yeah, there you go. Interesting. Where'd you uh, get that from? What's the background on that? Um, female war paint. Yeah, it's pretty similar, yeah. Because that's what I was telling uh, Jason when I had that dream. I was trying to describe it to him. It had like a very, I don't know how to like describe it, but you could see like the texture. Like it wasn't just, you know, kind of like modern right. paint or whatever. It looked very handcrafted, handmade, like, if that makes sense. But you could yeah, see like oh, the yeah. texture and everything. For, for those of you that are listening, um, what we're looking at is is a, uh, a picture of – a first nations female and it's got the uh the similar face paint that he was talking about he saw in his dream so if y'all want to see that come over and watch the show over on texas front porch at youtube so let me jump get that down now jason take Text the wheel you. take the wheel just for a minute and Try not to take us off road too much, and I'll be right back. I make absolutely no promises at all. <laughs> um, so, real quickly, uh, for those who may be joining us, uh, you know, in the, for the second hour, weren't here for the first hour. This is Hayden and Cole. They're from the MHS Network. Uh, link to the channel is in the doobly doo below. They recently did Expedition Alone. It's a recent documentary that just came out a month ago, right after Thanksgiving. It is the search for the Oklahoma Sasquatch, and we're having them on. They're a bunch of great guys. And yes, we uh, we this is their this is their second time on, but uh, and we do know them. Uh, in fact, Tex, I am in the documentary. There's a little bit of an admission there. Um, I was added for the sex appeal, obviously, and Tex was supposed to be in there. Uh, unfortunately, he was unable to make uh, the trip out. Uh, the We were all meeting out at Brown Springs. Uh, myself, Tex was going to be there, and we had uh, Shelly Covington, Montana, who's also in the documentary, and her friend is there as well. Um, so there you have it. Again, it is on the MHS network real quick, uh, since Lori is asking. It is on the MHS network. Again, links in the doobly doo, but you can just go up to uh, YouTube, type in the MHS network, and it'll it'll show up. It's uh, great. So anyway, um, since Texas has absconded for a bit, uh, well, I'll hold off on the story about Brown Springs uh, that's going to tie into your new documentary on the UFOs. Um, so we'll we'll give him a little bit of time. Uh, in the interim, Hayden, would you like to uh, tell our audience about your your pterosaur sighting? Because we have that in common as well. Yeah. So I was, I don't know how old, um, but I have always been uh, a sucker for dinosaurs. I've always loved dinosaurs and prehistoric reptiles and stuff. And um you know, I, I wasn't expecting anything. You know, I thought, you know, they were all long dead and gone. I'd never heard about anybody seeing a living dinosaur except for Nessie. Yeah. And and there was questions to whether or not Nessie's even real. And I'm out fishing with my dad. And we're, we're packing up the boat. We're getting ready to leave. And dad happens to see it. And he, he, he just points up and he's like, hey, look at that. That's cool. He, he thought it was some just weird looking bird. And I look up 
and I see the distinct crescent shaped wings and the, uh, the crest on the head. That's about as long as its beak was its whole mouth. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of a, a dark molted brown color. Um, that a little lighter maybe than Texas hat there is actually. Um, and it was just my my mouth hit the floor. I I was just like, Dad, you realize what that is? Like I got so excited, and I I thought I was the only one. I was like, How on earth did I see? Like I couldn't have seen what I saw, but I did, and I had that story has never changed, and. You know, as, as a kid, I, I start hearing about cryptozoology and I that maybe other people have seen weird things, too, that shouldn't still be around. And then I realized there's a whole community of people that have seen these things alive and not just in the United States, all over the world, especially in Africa. Uh, in Africa, there's a creature there they call the Kongamoto. Um and I actually really want to do an Expedition Alone documentary in Africa, like Expedition Alone Quest for the Lost World or something. I think that'd be mm -hmm. um, because Africa has got a lot of dinosaurs, apparently, according to all the native people who've never seen Jurassic Park. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, that's, that's my story. Um not much to it really it just it was part of what sent me down this journey of looking for cryptids wink at me that hurts <laughs> that hurts a lot <laughs> the sexy beast has returned i'm going to take that person um, i guess we got to get into this and station open his mouth Turn straight, I did. <clears throat> All right, so y'all talking about your next documentary, right? Yeah. You're talking about aliens and spiritual stuff and wanting to start out Brown Springs and everything. I had a time loss incident in Brown Springs. Oh, snap. And it wasn't just a few minutes. It was several hours that went missing. It was me and D DOS and we were down there and we were um poking around for for some Bigfoot stuff and and uh we, we had to we had to go back and, and pick up his kids at the bus stop at three thirty. And uh it was about eight thirty in the morning or so when we got there. We walked we, we left the truck and we went down in the bottoms and and uh walking along and everything and then we said, man, I'm I'm hungry. We never looked at our clocks. Never did. I try to make it a habit not to when I'm out like that. Mm -hmm. Um because I, I kinda it, it helps me detach a little bit, you know, and and you know when because I, I try not to be on a time clock of any kind when I'm out there. The sun is my is my time clock and that's the way I you know, hey it's getting dark, well let's head back to camp or or whatever. And uh so we we both uh both said well that gum i'm getting hungry you know well it's probably about lunch time let's go ahead and head on back and grab us some lunch and we'll go pick the kids up so we uh we started back towards the truck and we missed the turn off to the truck now i hadn't been out there but a few times and D had been out there for years. He knew this place like the back of his head. And we missed the turn off to go up back up to the truck. And we was like, I don't recognize any of this stuff. I was, you know, kind of looking around. And I, he goes, I don't either. He goes, you don't think we missed the turn? He goes, no, no, ain't no way. Well, sure enough, we missed it by a quarter of a mile. And so we turned around, we walked back, we found our way back up to the truck. And uh, when we got up there, it was 4.30 in the afternoon. And we was like, what in the world? 
didn't have neither one of us had any ill effects or you know we didn't wake up laying on the ground or or nothing like that you know and and we 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 didn't talk about it a whole lot we were just privately or publicly we, we just i don't know it was just something a, a subject we very rarely breached and and uh he did have some footage he was filming when we were down there and there's um footage of somebody or something has the camera and it's like sprinting through the woods it spins around on 360 neither one of us can be seen um, and we never left each other's hip and on top of that um you know when you when you're filming with a digital camera and you stop start stop start it's one two three four you know the the files are you know they were all jumbled up Mm. And when we were, I was being, Rob was interviewing me about this uh, not too long ago. It was several months ago. Mm -hmm. And there's two people in chat that, that, that know D and, and they were like, well, what about the footage of, of, of the camera dropping and, and D and C and D sprint off? I didn't have any idea about that, that part of the footage. Um, D said that didn't happen. I don't know because as far as I know, the footage is gone. I don't know. Um, I can't say if the footage does exist, didn't exist. What? I just, I, you know, um, it was odd that two different people claim to have seen it claim to have seen it out of the blue in chat hmm. you know and uh that that it, it it bothered me i mean i wasn't expecting it now this comes on the heels of jessica jones which is a remote viewer and a part of our team remote viewed that incident and said that me and d were abducted um so yeah there you go <laughs> that's and, the short version of it anyway my question is like because i mean y'all went out there and you were conscious you, you you were conscious and you left there conscious you have a complete recollection of everything you remember from the time you spent there yep and there's no gaps in your experience but there's missing time and there's weird yep. things that happened that neither of you remember and then i'm assuming you were sober you know <laughs> and, stone cold sober yeah so i don't know i mean that's just yeah and that's the thing like i don't know like what kind of technology could do that that's that's one of the things that that wigs me out about ufo abduction stories i try to imagine the kind of technology that could do some of the things that people say they can do. It doesn't sound like technology. You know, and I, there was a message that Jessica, I, this is a great point to point out that there was a message Jessica got in concerning your abduction as well. Your alleged yeah, go, abduction. Go ahead. Jason. Oh no, no text. I, I, it should come from you. Well, are you talking about what <laughs> what they said when they when they got me? Yeah. <laughs> they uh according to her, she she picked up them saying, "Oh, we got a big one." <laughs> However, that's not the that's really not the message. I I did want to hear that you say that, but the message that I think is is more important here, but that is great is <laughs> Essentially, it was, this is where we are allowed to collect specimens. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they said um, she picked up that that area is where they are allowed to, to collect specimens. The Brown Springs area specifically. Yep. Oh, that's interesting. So, it, which ties into your, and, and actually there was a great comment. I wanted to uh, pop it up there because I think this is, this is definitely something that y'all will, will be talking about, right? 
I don't like talking about this, by the way, guys. It bothers me. No, I mean, as it would. I mean, any this demonic experience always does bother you. And uh, Tommy Gunn says, or the Fae. And, uh-huh. and this is one of those things a lot of uh, ufologists do not like to talk about, right? Like you said, y- you know, th- some of this just doesn't seem like technology. Well, yeah, every everything that you find in modern ufology is found in Fae lore. Mm-hmm. It's one-to-one. Even, you know, uh, uh, weird implants being found that's not uncommon in within the lore of the fey and elves and this is a again you were to put me in the giorgio suclos you know aliens guy um if you put us at a table we would fundamentally agree on this premise the uh in fact i will i'll even quote uh alistair crowley the the beast himself who's famously said Today we call them angels and demons. Tomorrow we will call them something else. You put me and Giorgio Suclos at the table. We're going to completely agree on that statement. Mm-hmm. Where we're going to disagree is he thinks they were always extraterrestrials from another planet. I think it was right the first time. Yeah. yeah so it, it's this is just again, you y'all didn't know this had ha- this development had happened, and so you mentioned you want to start off at Brown Springs. I think your instincts are right on that. There's more going on at Brown Springs than just an interesting watering hole and a few Sasquatch. Yeah. Well, I, I got to give credit to Coleman for his instinct of wanting to start there because we were trying to figure out where to start. And he just, I mean, Coleman, you just really seem to feel like we just need to go back there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's just an interesting area. Tex, you've had your encounters there. I had, my weird thing happened after there, but connected. Um, I'd seen the stuff from other people online talking about that. I guess they've seen or have had UFO activity. So it just to me, it just makes sense to go back there. And yeah. Now, what I will tell you is it's like Jason said, there's more going on there. Um, and I think it has to do more with the spiritual aspect of things than we want to admit. Some of us, anyway. Um, <laughs> me for one. <laughs> <I think. laughs> um, there are physical creatures out there. Don't get me wrong, folks. There, there are. But there are other entities that are, it seems like they are, pretending to be these physical creatures that we're looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it is a mysterious place. It, it really, really is. It's got a, it's got its own energy to it. We've jokingly called it the Southern Skinwalker Ranch because of everything mm-hmm. that goes on down there. And it is, it's something um, I don't know if it's if it's nefarious or if it's got I don't I just don't know um, we went through a, we went through a, a, or I went through a short period. Well, I can't say short period. Um, a time that, and, and Cole, th- this is really meant towards you. Um, that I felt like I needed to go back. And it got to, we were all having a discussion, me and the whole team one night. And I said, and I had said it before, it's not something that I f- want to do necessarily. It's something I feel like I need to do. And that that all started when I was on D's show and I shot my mouth off and I said, I'm going to go out there alone by myself at night. <laughs> and 
I'm one of these guys that once I stick my foot in my mouth, you know, it's like, well, you know, here I go. And it ain't, it ain't, it ain't cause I'm a badass. It ain't cause I'm brave. It ain't, it, you know, there's a fine line between bravery and stupidity. And we know, know what that, side you're on. Yeah. Well, I've been accused of jumping back and forth quite a bit. So, um, they, the, the team had a serious talk with me. They were very concerned about, um, the draw that this place had on me. Um, and they grounded me. I could, they, they said, look, we, we don't want you going back to the cemetery by yourself. Um, just because of all the experiences everybody's had. And it came on the heels of the, the really wild freaking night that Jason was, um, talking about earlier. And, uh, we lost Cole. See, they got him. Yep. They we, got him. We, yeah. We was too late. <laughs> He'll be back on. His internet's kind of being funky. <laughs> and uh it it's just it's it's just a weird it's just a weird place. Um let me get him back up here. Um it's it's a place you need to you need to be careful. Um because now we've had bear sightings down there from our crew and other people that we've met they got they got them on game cameras Mm -hmm. um you've got big cats down there as far as mountain lions go they're supposed to be there then we have uh, there's reports of things that aren't supposed to be there yeah thank you Um, thank you tiger king yeah y'all know about the tiger thing right oh yeah okay so and then if if you didn't have any of that the freaking pig problem down there is in itself a reason to go armed you know um i will say this they have stationed a a a a wildlife officer down there that that is his territory and his alone and that's what he focuses on and that's what that place needed because the human element was getting rough down there we were finding crack pipes and um hypodermic needles in our campsites and stuff like Mm -hmm. that yeah there was some crazy stuff that we were finding yeah. So, and I, I, me and pops ran into the grand poopa of crackheads down there and I'm sorry if crackhead, um, that term offends anybody. I apologize, but yeah, he was, he was tweaking pretty bad, but, um, anyway, it, uh, it's just a place you need to watch yourself. Um, y'all talk about don't go alone. Well, never go alone. Yeah. Do as I say, not as I do type thing with me, but, um, <laughs> for those who are unfamiliar with uh with brown springs it is on the oklahoma side it's in thackerville oklahoma mm-hmm. just for those who, who may not be aware of where brown springs is it's a public park you can go anytime yeah but yes we have grounded text at least from going up to the cemetery by himself right that's where he's grounded from because we don't we don't need him the man has has not gone up that thing and not fallen at least once. It's a tradition. <laughs> so I'm yeah, I don't want him going anymore. up there by himself, and then you know he's trapped with a broken leg and waiting for some you know waiting for somebody to come and save him. Well, see, well, good- and I mean, if something is drawing you there, right, impulsing you to go alone, that's not a good sign. Yep. Well, and I don't know how much water that holds because the whole alone thing, the whole, that, that's just kind of my gig. Um, you know, um, it's not the smartest thing to do by any means, but it's what I've done all my life. I mean, when I was, you know, from the age of 12 years old, I was going out and hunting and camping out by myself, you know? So it's just something I've always done. I feel comfortable doing it. I, I don't recommend anybody doing it. You, you you need to know your way around. You need to know what you're doing when, before you do this. And I'm, I'm not, I'm, I am, uh, how can I put this? I, I'm not an Olympic athlete. Um, but so I, you know, I even, you know, I, I'll take precautions that I, that I haven't 
in the past when I go. Um, but yeah, if y'all, if y'all want to start out there, um, I'll be more than happy to be a part of what y'all are doing and, uh, show y'all some sites out there and stuff like that. If y'all want to, and I'll try to, I, I will, I will make it this time. I promise. <laughs> Absolutely. We'd love, you, yeah, we'd love to have you, have you guys be part of it again for sure. Yeah. We got some great questions, uh, in the chat, uh, that we can throw up there and, you know, maybe get some answers on. Um, firstly, that's better. Wink at me. That's better. <laughs> now, wink, you're just kissing up because you don't want him to feel bad. Now, come on. It doesn't mean it's not true, Tex. Hey, Wink. Wink is my number one fan. You leave her alone. She can be your number one fan. She's just got to speak the truth about my rugged sexiness. Uh, D. A. Roberts has asked. Uh, it's for me, but I think this is for everyone. Uh, would you recommend carrying something made of iron? For the History Channel folks, uh, to keep them at bay just in case they they are fey. I I've honestly never held a lot of uh, sway on the whole iron, you know, thing and a lot of you know salt. Honestly, I just don't. That having been said, I think you should always have something iron on you, particularly <laughs> when you're. In fact, probably several things: fixed blade, at least forty four special on the low end, maybe forty five. Always you know, maybe bad. maybe lead's better, yeah. Uh <laughs> well the again, the gun itself's made out of iron. Um, but yeah, it, it's it, like you if you're going out there, if you're going out in the woods at all, you should have a sidearm at least and a fixed blade knife. Period, end of story. Because forget the supernatural, forget the bears and the tigers and the lions and the rabid marmosets there's always <laughs> there's crackheads like <laughs> i don't know what to tell you man like like there's not like everyone's like are you worried about the bigfoot no i'm worried about the crackhead i'm worried about the i'm worried about the heroin addict who's who thinks i'm you know who thinks i may have cash on me and he needs another you know he needs to get another dime back that's what i'm worried about yeah i um there there's something and, and i started carrying one with me when I started driving. A little pocket Bible. Everywhere I go, I take scripture with me. And, be, and you know, I, I was just, I just started because, you know, well, hey, I'm driving and, you know, I just, I want protection for being on the road. And, you know, and, but then like years later, and especially dealing with, with all these kinds of things, I, I was reminded of how whenever I would have nightmares as a kid, my mom would say, put your Bible under your pillow. And I would, and it would, it would work because I was resting on the word of God. I had the word of God with me. And, you know, I'm not saying you have to be, you know, there reading it and, and quoting it and all, all the time. But that, I mean, I have went through several pocket Bibles. This is the fourth one I have carried around everywhere I go with me. Uh, <laughs> and I, I mean, that's what I recommend. You know, if, if it is Fay, the word of God is going to, you know, quote unquote Fay, because Fay was the charade before aliens. Yeah. You know, so if it is aliens, you know, quote unquote, or fey or demons. The word of God is the only thing that I think really holds any water against it. Yep. No, I'm right there with you. And again, uh, to to Texas point, uh, I, the weird things don't usually happen around me uh, for because <laughs> I'm out there doing the same things. By the way, uh, Scott, I'm from South Dallas, worse than Detroit. <laughs> you know, there's there's two people that every time I take them out there. No, no craziness happens when, when they're with me. And that is Jason and Zach from Rooted Expeditions. And, uh, well, you know, there are actually, there's three CD Squatcher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, she kind of keeps the crazy stuff at bay also. 
Um, and I've talked about this before. Um, you know, having your armor on when you go out there, and that you can talk all the good stuff you want about how good of a Christian you are, how deep in the faith you are, and all this kind of stuff. You can talk all that you want, but when you get out there, um, if you're faking it, they know these things are going to know. Yeah, there ain't no fooling them. And all they need is a little chink in that armor to get their foot in the door. So you, you better be dang sure you're right with the man upstairs or whatever you call him. You know, however you address him, whatever. But, uh, yep. And that's about all I got to say on that. <laughs> No, I agree. I mean, take the example in the Bible where the, the guys were trying to cast out demons and instead of the possessed guy whooped their sorry butts, yeah. they ask, you know, what the crap? And, you know, they get reprimand, reprimanded and they're like, you you weren't on Jesus's authority. You didn't you don't have that relationship with him. You're just, you know, vomiting back up the things you've heard. Yeah. Mm hmm. So. Nope. I just, you know, I, 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 with the things that I've experienced out there, I just, I want to, you know, caution anybody that gets into this field and, and goes to poking around and <clears throat> you got to be careful what you wish for. Yes. You know, these things are um, real. That's yeah. the, at the end of the day, this is a real, this is the real thing. Like this is, if there's one, again, not to get too off in this particular soapbox, but if there is one complaint I have about the modern church, and I have many, it's that we do not take the supernatural seriously. Seriously. This is a real phenomena. It is absolutely true. Again, I know people are going to have different opinions. You know, it's like different traditions. That's fine. I come from a, from a Christian tradition. I think the Bible is real. I think it is accurate. And the simple fact of the matter is this is a real thing. You can't, if you, if you were, if you, I, so many people have hurt themselves by not taking this stuff seriously. Mm -hmm. Period. This is, this is not something to play with. Uh, again, generally, it's like, look, you want to go out looking for things? That's fine. Just be careful what you're looking for. Yep. Too yeah. many people go out and they're like, well, let's play with a Ouija. Bob will tell you not to play with a Ouija board. Yeah. yeah. When you, when you open, when you knock on a door, be careful because of who may answer. Yep. Straight up. Now, we have some other questions. Uh, Wink at me. Absolutely. Yes. They can see straight through you. She calls them the other. Look, that's the thing. Faye is nothing more than a than a, 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 a hold term for a paranormal entity. That was just the Faye is simply that is the word that they used in in you know your in European traditions. You can call them the other, uh, the, the, just a tag. it's just a tag. The Irish called them the, the, uh, uh, oh, what they call them the other people, the other folk. Like they didn't, they didn't even use their names. Again, if you're in Iceland, they're the elves. If you're from an, from an Islamic tradition, you would call them the jinn. Like they're all, it's just a tag for paranormal entity. Something that belongs on that side of the veil, not on this side. You don't want to, and they're and they're not always fun to, to play with. Is all I'm saying. And I and I think that 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 place out there, there's a few reasons that it it's got going on what it's got going on. Um, one is the dark history of the place itself. Yes. Um, two is uh, ley lines cross there. They intersect. Yeah. And then several. Go, yeah. And then when you when you start talking about if you want to talk about the cemetery. You've got a spring that dr runs directly underneath the mm -hmm. cemetery. The, uh, uh, the, <laughs> the cemetery. Yeah, that thing. And uh, not to mention all the dark stuff that's went on up there. You know, I mean, there's a reason we've got coven of witches running around out there trying mm -hmm. to do ritual stuff out there. There is a reason that they are drawn to that place. There's a, I mean, it's a bear. It's an Indian burial mound. There's a reason the mound builders put it there to begin with. Yep. It's not, a, these are not coincidences. No. 
yeah. on something slightly lighter. Uh, Wild Gaming with Jimbo points out that he found uh, that he also saw a young rabbit uh, killed when he was a kid. Like what you explained with the uh, with the raccoon that had had its, yeah. ne its neck pulled apart. Yeah, this is this is actually fairly common with Sasquatch that we found is snapping of the neck. Usually, now for larger game, it's spun around right where it breaks yeah. the, it breaks the axis and the atlas, the two bones that allow your head to go up and down and side to side. But for smaller prey, yeah, just yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, think about it. It's what we, you know, if, if you've ever done any dove hunting or quail hunting, that's what you do. You know, just no, I prefer the head right the head between the the two fingers and spin it around. Well, well I don't spin it around. I I just, I, I just prefer them on the dish fried. <laughs> well, you got to get them to the dish fried. You don't want to fry them alive. I just I'm well, a bigger fan no. of you grab them by the neck and you just spin it around the snaps it real fast well it's a, it, you know i mean the same thing with a rabbit you can hit them you know there's a couple of ways to kill a rabbit I, how did we get on this <laughs> you can you can chop them in the back you can chop in the back of the head and, and chop. The spine you know and snap the spinal cord you can my dad used to thump them between the ears and kill them <laughs> oh my goodness that uh, that makes uh, a lot that brings a lot of questions about your father well, yeah, this is the same man that dropped has, a horse to his, that punched a horse and dropped him to his knees. I mean, you know, so if anyone has pictures um, of anything similar to that rabbit or our raccoon situation, send them our way. We would love to see them. We would love to see the similarities and the differences. Mm -hmm. Well, I got to tell you that we found. I'll, I'll have to send you all these pictures. Um, we were out there one time and we found, now I think this was probably humans, um, but it was weird. I don't know <laughs> what possesses anybody to do this, but we found, we were driving back when there's this tree and there's this little sound and, and I saw something sticking out of the side of the tree. And when we got up there, it was a deer leg sticking out of the knot of a tree. Oh, and then wow. on the other side, there was another leg sticking out of another knot of the tree. Well, in the the crook of the tree sat the pelvis of this deer. It was weird. Well, then I've got a picture of, I, I can't remember what kind, I can't remember if it's a deer or a coyote skeleton. But it's almost, it, it's like almost fully intact. The head's still on, the spine, the ribs and everything stuck on a branch just hanging there you know but it, bones a bit pick clean so i don't know uh text gary spike senior aka pops would like to remind you about the goat across from the springs i think that's what is that what i'm thinking about it may be what i'm thinking about i don't know the one in the tree no, no, no. The, the well, the the full, the whole, the fully intact thing. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yep. Anyway, moving on. Um, um, Corey, when you yeah. uh, points out that when y'all were uh, call blasting, <laughs> that you may be you may be making a, doing a mating call. So that may be something you want to be careful about. I've actually always wondered that. Like every time, you know, everyone goes out there and they do the calls. They do the. I'm always wondering, like, what happens when this thing shows up, right? Like every time I watched an episode of, of 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 Finding Bigfoot, I'm always like, "What happens if these things? If one of these things shows up one day, just like and you know, like, yeah, yeah, maybe he's maybe he's lonely. He's like, oh, here's and he shows up and you're there and you're not what he expected to find. All I'm saying is, <laughs> what you'll do, yeah. <laughs> I just have a sneaking suspicion this is not necessarily the smartest thing we could be going. Will you prove that Bigfoot exists? To you, yes. To anyone else, that's still open for debate because we don't know how that's going to play out. That's all I'm saying. I, you know, I, I, just, I don't think anybody wants to be prison broke by Bigfoot. So. Yeah. I, it's like you, you may end up reenacting that, uh, that old Looney Tunes cartoon with the... Uh, I will pet him and love him and call him George. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. See these quarters. That's what I was talking about. The deer that was stuffed in the tree. Yeah. 
See, see, that's one of the reasons. Well, next time that we do a Bigfoot documentary, one of the things we're going to do is we're not going to do all that calling and, and stuff. We, we might try a couple things, you know, like like people put out audio, um, you know, mics and mm -hmm. stuff to call in coyotes, right? So we might try something like that instead. But what we're really looking at is going, you know, you know, descensing ourselves, camoing up, you know, up in a deer stand, <coughs> whatever, that kind of a thing. Just trying something different like that. You know what? Here, here's my thought on that. <laughs> One, out there, especially, they may not see you, you know, but it ain't going to take them long to figure out you're there, you're there and you're, they're going to know you're there before you know, they're there. Oh yeah. Well, so, I mean, you're on their street. I mean, it's just like, you know, yeah, you, you're, you're going to notice, their house, you know? But, yeah. It might take I you mean, a minute, but you're going to notice the naked guy painted like the mural out down the street. That's just standing exactly. up against the wall. Right. You know, I mean, a lot of people talk about, well, you know, they can see infrared on the cameras. Okay, let, let's play devil's advocate here and say they can't see infrared. They can smell you. Mm -hmm. The cameras smell different just by themselves. Plastic has a yeah. smell. Okay? It's not normal out there. So they're going to, they get a whiff of you, they get a whiff of the camera, you know, whatever. Um, they're, they're going to, of course, they're going to avoid this stuff, you know? So yeah. that just makes sense to me, but uh, the camo and then scent, mm, I don't think it makes, I, in fact, I think it hurts your, it hurts your chances. If anything else, because they know you're camo. looking for them. Yeah. 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 I've, um, I've had more, I've had more success, um, doing what I call passive research than I have anything else. Um, yeah. That's what I do. Just act like, go out there and act like they are not there. No matter what you hear, no matter what you see, ignore it. Yeah. You know, take note of it, but don't even acknowledge it. Well, and that's one of the reasons up, where I've had, them come up, I've had them come up with 10 feet away from me, you know, by ignoring throwing, them. Throwing rocks, doing all kinds throwing of things. Throwing rocks at my camp. Um, Pops can attest to this. We had one. Uh, run, run out of the brush, right up, right up beside my truck in camp, you know? Yeah. And I mean, so if you ignore them, you know, um, if you're say, say the four of us are standing around talking. Okay. We're standing in a circle. We're sitting there talking. It would still be a square. <laughs> Whatever. Um, <laughs> octagon. Um, there's only four, <laughs> but, um, anyway, one of us notices something over the other shoulder. Don't point it out. Don't go, Oh, look at that. Don't break stride. Just bring it up in normal conversation. You know, now interrupt the conversation, whoever's talking. Oh yeah. You know, just like we, um, we would be talking here. Oh yeah. Well, you got something over your left shoulder, but, uh, you know, don't turn around. You know, he's just, he's just, he's just playing peekaboo with us, that type of thing. That way we're all aware of it, but he doesn't know we're aware of him. And I think that gives you the best shot because he goes, Oh, I'm getting away with something. I can get a little closer. <laughs> yeah. You know. Well, and that's one of the reasons, cause I mean, you know, all, all this research is a science and, one of the things that we're, I mean, and that's the thing, like there's some stuff we're going to try before we do the next Bigfoot documentary to right. see if it yields any results. If it doesn't, we just won't include much of it, if any. Like we might include like, you know, snippets here and there just to show like, hey, these are some things we've tried. Right, right. You know, and we can put on a statistic or whatever, like, you know, we've done this many, you know, camoed up, deer blind, deer stand, you know, outings. And compare this to this is how many campfires that we've cooked bacon over out in the woods. Yeah. 
And this is where we have the activity. So that's one of the things we're going to be experimenting with and showing the, like, um, like uh, mm -hmm. Montana said, uh, Shelly, Shelly Montana said in the documentary is, you know, essentially citizen science. Mm -hmm. so, yep. But yeah. Um, real quick, uh, Corey Cole is asking, uh, Tex, have you ever seen symbols or signs of the left hand uh, painted outline while at Brown Springs? No, I have not. I haven't seen anything like that either. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, interesting. Uh, we have seen some interesting things out there, and there's some yeah. interesting things on the actual burial mound itself. Uh, now that they've cleared it out a lot, we found those standing stones. Um, yeah, that was yeah. weird. Yeah. Um, so, but again, I think they're too. You know, we can't tell what they were originally yeah. because they were. They've been. They've clearly been knocked down and and all that. But they were. Those were clearly standing stones. So I've got some footage and and photos of it somewhere in my archive. <clears throat> Yeah, um, yeah. It, it wasn't super good footage. Um, it it just looked kind of flat in the in the picture, so it's kind of hard to make it out just because we were shooting at 1080p. That's one of the reasons we're working on upgrading our camera. Mm -hmm. um, but I might throw that up there on the Patreon for anyone who wants to see a little bit more of just what we saw on our trip. Real quick, um, before it gets too late. Gene would like to know, uh, Tex and Rob, who's buying the steaks? It ain't Tex. For I'll those, what, for it, those who it, aren't, who don't know, uh, Tex and Rob had a bit of a, a wager going over the, uh, Tex, uh, Texas Christian, uh, university and, uh, Michigan Wolverines yep. <laughs> on that particular game on new year's day, Rob may or may not have made the right call on that. Oh no, Rob lost. <laughs> Even Brandy, I saw that Brandy was a Michigan fan too, so mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, hey, she, you know, she threw her hat in the ring. So the way I see it, I get two steak dinners. That's yeah. what I'm, and yeah, I, I think I should get one by association, as I am a Texan as well. So just saying. <laughs> Yeah. And you know what? I think I think we ought to hold off until we get back down to Jefferson and go over to <laughs> Yeah, uh, was it 1852 or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Go over there and have yeah. stakes over yonder. If y'all ever make it out to the Jefferson Bigfoot Conference and we're there, we got to go to the there's a steakhouse that's right, that's literally just right down the street from the actual oh, yeah. conference. It's a uh, 1859 or something like that. Honestly, some of the best one of the best steaks I've ever tasted. It's amazing store store bought restaurant steak the best i've ever had that's awesome yeah that would be the caveat would be that so anyway um but back to y'all before again since we're, we're coming to the end of the hour uh y'all are found at the mhs network yep uh the the it's, it's again links in the doobly doo below very technical phrase and it's Expedition Alone, uh, the search for the Oklahoma Sasquatch. Is there anything you would like to tell our wonderful viewers, uh, best people on the internet, um, anything else about y'all, anything you'd like to sort of end with before we, uh, before we saunter into the, into the sunset? Uh, Coleman, I'll let you go first. Uh, nothing much. I just want to say thank you to everybody watching, everyone who's uh, subscribed and supported, not just our channel, but Texas and, and Jason's channel, you know, and, uh, that's about it. You know, we appreciate all of you and all of your support. Thank you so much. Yeah, we we we've been overwhelmed and, and humbled by the support we've gotten. Um, thank you so much again to everyone who's you know given your time uh, to watch tonight and to to watch our documentary. Um, it was a pleasure to make it. Um, so the MHS Network. Uh, one one plug here. The MHS Network is kind of a department of my company revolve studios. Um, and I've built the MHS network up with Coleman and Montana, uh, for a couple of years now. Um, but it's, it's a branch mm -hmm. of a much larger tree and the rest of the tree is starting to grow. Um, Christmas now, when you Day, say Montana, are you talking about Shelly? I'm talking about 
Mills, uh, Mon- Mon- Montana, who's more frequent on the on the channel, um, and and you'll you know see him throughout the documentary uh, or have if you've already watched it. Um, but Revolve Studios LLC, if you look that up on YouTube, it's one of the top things that pops up. Its image is a galaxy. Um, that's kind of the the card that plays at the beginning of all of our um you know films and stuff like that and um christmas day we uploaded our latest one of our latest short films a shadow of the behemoth it's about a little girl who goes camping with her family and has kind of a cryptid encounter herself um of the prehistoric nature uh, so the tagline is a camping trip for the eons that was a lot of fun to make it was it was a, the hardest film i've ever made uh, but it was a technical success for us in a lot of ways, but I'll shut up about that one. We've got another short film coming out the 20th of this month on that channel called just to be, um, I've got <clears throat> one video that's kind of a preview of it on that channel. You can check it out. And then on February 1st, we have a short film coming out called Lisa green. It's, uh, I, I just got the distribution rights from a friend who made it, but the screenplay for this film was absolutely beautiful. The trailer's on the channel right now. Go check it out. Um, it's a very touching story, and we've we've got some more films that we're working on casting. Uh, I'm getting ready to do auditions. Uh, we're going to be doing some local, some virtual. We've got several short films that we're looking to put in production as well for anyone interested. Well, if you need a couple of roles for ugly fat guys, you know where to call. You guys know a couple guys? We might yes. know a few. <laughs> might know a few. I might know oh. a guy who knows a guy who may have robbed a guy. <laughs> uh, well, what part of Oklahoma are y'all out of? Uh, right now, Tulsa and Broken Arrow. There you go. That was a question. There you well, go. Guys. Once again, it's been great having you. Um, can't wait to have you back. And uh, looking forward to getting involved with y'all and uh, making this other stuff happen. It's um, That's an interesting place y'all are jumping into. Just, you know, watch your six when you're out there. Oh, yeah. We appreciate it. We appreciate it a lot. And thanks for sharing the place with us. Well, you know, it's like I said, you know, anybody that's got the the cojones or the enough crazy to, to, you know, jump in there. It's it's public. Y'all can do whatever you want. I I don't. And it is a beautiful place. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous location. Like I know everyone's like. Oh, it's this ter- and it's like, look, it's not a terrible place. It's a great place. People go out there all the time. It's just it, it's a wildlife sanctuary. It's a wildlife sanctuary. Just be careful what you're looking for. My yeah. dad about caught an armadillo by the tail while we were out there. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So well, thanks again for having us on the show. This has been awesome. No, we appreciate y'all. Um yeah. Again, to everyone in chat, thank y'all for, you know, if you're watching live, we appreciate y'all. Y'all are, y'all are the reason we do this. And if you're watching on replay, we love y'all just as much. You know, we know that not, not everyone can be in the live chat. And y'all are, y'all are just as important as anyone else is that's a member of this team. Y'all really are. And um, I was happy to, st- uh, to sit in for, for Brandy. Uh, we're hoping she's doing well. She's uh, currently having a bunch of storms right now, which is why, uh, you know, I'm here, not her. Um, so don't worry for those of you who've gotten used to Brandy, she will be here next week and, uh, don't worry. I'm, I'm not going to, I, I could never replace her in y'all's hearts. I understand that. So Brandy and I don't, and I, I've forgotten how much, how hard it is to put up with this guy. I don't know why you're doing it now, but, uh, thank you. Well, I gotta tell you, you know, you, you got a long way to go cause, uh, you, she, she's got. Those those golden locks that she has, you got a long way to go to fill them shoes. Well, maybe I'll just steal her for questions. Everything. Eh. You would too. Uh, I would. 
Thanks to uh, auto, uh, Overbuilt Automotive for sharing the uh, Revolve Studios link uh, in the chats and stuff. That's really helpful. Thank you. And again, it's the MHS Network on YouTube. Again, links in the doobly-doo below. Uh, Tex, push that button. Push that button. One quick note. Thank you, everybody, for TikTok that joined us. Yes. Um, there, we're gonna be. I'm going to be doing this every Monday, 630 Central. So y'all can catch, I'm going to be doing live on both of them. Now, another thing, guys, believe it or not, YouTube has remonetized us. Oh, awesome. Yes. We, we got, we got put in YouTube jail for a month and, and. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. So yeah, apparently YouTube doesn't like it when you start talking truth. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yep. But we are back. So yeah, the super chat, super thanks, and all that kind of stuff's open again. So, but more importantly, share us out. Um, what do you say? Inflict this on your yes. Fli- your inflict friends, this on everybody. Yeah, your friends, family, mortal enemies doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> y'all take care, and we will see y'all tomorrow night. Yeah. See y'all. With- Bye. As soon as I figure out where the button went. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I'm glad this happened on my time back.